More than 40 years ago, a musician named Li Wunan introduced Taiwan to the harp, importing the very first harp the country had ever seen. He made it his life's mission to make the instrument popular throughout the country. Today, his son, Li Zheying, has taken it upon himself to carry on his mission. His efforts have taken him to some of the most far-flung parts of the island. So far, he has made over 200 visits to remote communities with his harp, and he's got no plans to stop anytime soon. We join him on the journey in our Sunday special report. After finishing the day's classes, these children gather in a circle, holding hands as they ride unicycles. This elementary school in Nanto County's Zhongliao Township was rebuilt following the 1999 GG earthquake. At only 4,000 square meters, this small school is attended by 30 students. <sighs> this Tuesday afternoon at the start of fall started out like any other, but today, one man has brought the children a special surprise. Hello, Nimanhao. Upon seeing the huge harp, the children's eyes light up. As the man on stage speaks to them, he throws in jokes here and there to get the whole room laughing. Even as he teaches them the history of the harp, he doesn't miss the opportunity to sprinkle in some humor. This high-spirited man, named Li Zheying, is a harp teacher as well as an unconventional musician. Do I throw myself fully into what I do? If I want to leave children with an impression of this instrument, and if I want them to be willing to listen to me speak, I have to find a way to get close to them. I have to make them happy and make them laugh. This is the nature of children. You have to play with them. Li Zheying started off in 2014, traveling to schools and remote communities all over. This is his 219th performance. Aside from Li's popularity with children, what people know best about him is that he was born into a family of musicians. Li Zhe is a classical musician and the music director for One Song Orchestra. Their father, Li Wunan, is a well-known harpist known affectionately as the Harp Godfather. More than 40 years ago, Li Wunan introduced Taiwan to the harp, bringing the first harp into the country from Japan. My father felt that the sound of the harp was brought to the earth from the heavens by angels and that it was the most wonderful form of music. In his heart, he felt that such a beautiful instrument must be brought to Taiwan. So 40 years ago, he spent close to 200,000 NT to buy a Japanese-made harp. 40 years ago, with 200 NT, you could buy a townhouse. In the 1970s, Li Wunan not only spent a large sum of money to buy a harp, he also researched the production of harps and built a factory. However, his son Li Zheying was less devoted. Despite starting his study of the harp at the age of five, when he practiced together with his father and brother, Li Zheying was quite a bit less interested in music. After I graduated from elementary school, I temporarily halted my study of the harp. When it came to enter university, Li Zheying didn't follow in his brother's footsteps and go on a path of music study. Instead, he pursued a degree in information management. After graduation, he took a job in Kaohsiung as a computer engineer, but his stable life as an office worker took a turn one day in 1997 when he received a phone call from his brother that would change his life. He called me and said, Zheyin, are you free on February 14th? He said he had been performing regularly at a restaurant and he picked up an offer to perform elsewhere on February 14th but couldn't find anyone to cover for him. He said, Zheyin, why don't you come cover for me? It's only two hours. Little did Li Zheyin know that covering for his brother that one time would ignite within him a passion for music that he lacked as a child. After being separated from the heart for many years, he raised his hands to pluck its strings once again, practicing before his restaurant performance. Since then, Li Zheying has played at the National Concert Hall. But to enjoy his performances, you don't need to visit a music hall.
his dental clinic from outside of the operatory, the elegant sound of the harp fills the air, forming a stark contrast to the sound of the dental drill. The first time we heard him perform was at a restaurant. Since we have some patients who really enjoy music, we decided to ask him, could you come perform at our clinic? After hearing Li Zhiying perform, many of the clinic's patients become fans of his and start scheduling their appointments around times he is performing. What leaves some people bewildered is why, despite his regular performance schedule, he makes the long trek to perform in remote communities. Li Zhiying says his reason for visiting remote communities is to fulfill a dream of his father. My father had a big dream. He wished that he could walk in the park or along a river or anywhere at all and see someone holding a harp, just sitting there playing it. Of course, this is just some kind of idyllic fantasy, but it also represents my father's wish to see this instrument popularized throughout every corner of Taiwan. Li Wuna never was able to put a harp in every park during his lifetime. In 2014, at the age of 70, he became seriously ill and was in a coma for a week. After waking from the coma, he felt weak. But when his sons asked him to close the workshop, he refused to give up. He expressed hope for his sons to continue his work. My father's friend even scolded us about it once. He said, down in that alley, there's the son of an oyster noodle stall owner. Even he knows to come back to take over his dad's stall. But you and your brother don't demonstrate filial piety like that. We were so badly scolded, we were less speechless. But that just wasn't the life we wanted. Maybe we were unable to help my father by selling his harps to every Taiwanese, but at least I can bring the sound of the harp to every corner of Taiwan, especially to small schools and rural communities. To carry on the dream of popularizing the harp, he could have gone to big cities where there are more people, but he chose to start in remote communities. <laughs> The harp is somewhat ignored as an instrument, and it is relatively hard for beginners to learn. There are also very few people worldwide who learn to play it. At the time, I was thinking about it from a different angle. I thought, if we went to schools in remote communities and visited kids who would likely never see this instrument in their entire lives, would bringing the harp to show them leave a deeper impression? Actually, I wanted to plant in their hearts a small musical seed. Lee's pledge to visit 100 remote schools started with a message on Facebook in which he invited school teachers to apply. He never imagined such a massive response. A note taped next to the door of his apartment is filled with details of planned school visits. With a 40 kilogram harp in tow, Lee Zheying goes from one remote community to the next. On one trip, as he was headed for Kaohsiung, he succumbed to his exhaustion. It was sometime around my 10th trip. I was going to a school in Kaohsiung's Namashia Township. It was a nearly 500-kilometer trip. I remember I was driving in the middle of the road, and I could hardly keep my eyes open. I was on the road on a highway interchange. I couldn't handle it. I just pulled over and lay down. Li Zheying once contemplated giving up on his visits to remote schools, but when he thought about the children's reaction to hearing the harp, a smile came to his face. This thought, combined with his spirit of perseverance, convinced Li to push on. Three years later, he finally reached his hundredth visit to a remote community. One school in Kaohsiung's Dasha district called Jiacheng Elementary School was where I made my 100th remote community performance, which was a gift to my father. That day, my father and my mother also went to the school, of course. They sat before the stage, but to be honest, my father had no reaction. Li Zheying had thought that by visiting remote communities, he could carry on his father's dream. He never imagined that his efforts might fall flat. His father's unmoved reaction left him feeling dispirited. That was, until he heard his father's response when he was asked about it. Some of those schools are very hard to get to, and he was carrying two harps with him. Such drive is really quite amazing. My dad looked at the camera and said he admired me for doing this. I could finally let go of the large rock in my heart. 
I felt that having not helped him by taking over the factory was a great source of guilt. But after I knew that my father approved of me doing this, I knew what I was doing was right. For Li Zheng, his father's encouragement gave him the motivation to continue on after his 100th remote community visit. He says he also hopes that through his efforts, the remote schools he visits can also gain some recognition. Aside from that, he hopes to help his father realize his dream of bringing the harp to every corner of Taiwan.